Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, if you haven't noticed, there's something a little bit different. And that little something that's different is actually kind of big. It's a new camera. And with a new camera comes new audio. I got some new lighting that's gonna be coming in. It's all gonna be different. I'm committing and I'm investing more into the channel. So now I'm coming to you in 4K which means I can get digital zooms on whatever I'm doing and I have a little bit more room to manipulate footage in post processing. So anyway guys, today I have for you an air pump, another one, but this one here has a barb that sheared off completely. And I'm going to show you guys today why you might want a torch in your shop because Anybody that's ever worked with plumbing fittings before or stuck fasteners would know this little guy right here will make or break your day. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, guys, here I've got my two-stage air pump, and this is the first stage, this is the second stage, and this is the stage that outputs to whatever. I have honestly no idea where this guy comes from. I do know it's used in some sort of medical equipment, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, this is how I get a lot of stuff, is the people, other technicians will bring it to me. I don't know its history. I don't know anything about it. But what I do know is that they always need love. So this guy, it's got a sheared off brass barb and it's sheared off probably due to blunt trauma. Maybe the pump was dropped. But what I do know is in order to get this guy out, the first step that we're gonna have to do is we are gonna have to get a Torx bit like this. And if you have a set of easy outs, that'll work too. But never underestimate a good set of Torx bits, okay? So we're going to use that guy. We are going to loosen this guy up so it's almost ready to come out. And then I got to take the cylinder head off next. The reason we got to take the cylinder head off is because little tiny metal shavings, if they get into the compressor head, they will absolutely destroy the compressor head in little to no time at all. Even one tiny little metal fleck into the cylinder head. If this is a diaphragm, it could tear the diaphragm. If it's a piston, uh, if it's a wobble piston, it will destroy the Teflon seals on the edge of the wobble piston. Either way, metal in a compressor is real bad news. So always, 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 if you guys ever have to do anything to the nozzle, any metal work or anything like this, make sure that you go ahead and take the head off and clean it out nice and good with a wipe before you put it back together, okay? So first step, I found a correct size. It's a little bit too large to go in the hole. So this is a regular Harbor Freight Torx bit. And what I gotta do is I have to heat this guy up. The reason that you wanna heat the guy up is because you want to break down whatever bonds are in between the brass and the aluminum housing. And it could be corrosion, it could be blood. I have no clue what's on this guy. But I do know that when you apply heat, it always disturbs things. And you want it to disturb the bond between the brass and the aluminum. So, whether or not they use Loctite, whether or not they use plumbing compound, whatever they used, none of it likes heat, and that's good for me, okay? So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up. Mind you, there is a, what feels like a pla uh, plastic spacer in there, which is acting as your uh, gasket. So I'm gonna keep the heat as far away from that as possible. I'm gonna blast it right in the hole, get that brass nice and hot, because brass does conduct heat rather well. So I'm gonna get it pretty hot, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pound this guy into the hole, and I'm gonna use my ratchet and break it loose. Sounds easy, right? We're gonna find out together. So here we go. I'm using my mini torch, these guys are awesome. Notice I'm moving the heat around and I'm keeping it away from the gasket. See that? So I'm just moving it around. I'm seeing a little bit of puff of smoke near the uh, opening. That's okay. So if there's Loctite on there or something like that, Loctite 
It generally loses its bond at around 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which takes no time at all to get to. So you can tell I'm heating it up more than that, but 160 degrees Fahrenheit is usually what you have to get it around for Loctite. This, it looks like corrosion. So I'm heating it up a little bit extra. We take our Torx bit and I'm gonna pop it in the hole and I have my hammer set. You see it sticks. So once I get started, pound it in even better. Look at that. Okay, so now I can get it out with my hands. All right, I don't think I got any metal inside it, but we don't know what happened when it broke. So here is the piece that came off. I'm gonna set it off to the side. Mind you, it's still very hot. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and take the cylinder head off. And let's see if I can find a torx that'll fit that. That would be so good, of course. Of course, quarter inch. Here we go. Let me turn it sideways so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So because the cylinder head is under compression, because the gasket's under compression, remember to do a crosshatch pattern when you're loosening up the fasteners. And I do have one more thing to worry about at the very end of this. And that is, there's a junction tube right here between the two cylinder heads. This guy here will have to be loosened up, and I'm going to do that before I pull these fasteners out. So there's little stages to every little thing that I'm doing. And for that, I can just use a regular crescent wrench. All right. Well, nothing on this compressor is very difficult. I love those situations. And you take them while you can get them, because trust me, it doesn't happen all that often. There we go. Just loosen that guy up so that the cylinder head is floating. All right. So I do see a couple uh, O-rings that were underneath it and they're not in too good of a condition. So that's one of the things that I'm gonna have to change out. You can see the orange colored O-rings right here. Both of them are in really bad condition. All right, so here are the bolts for the cylinder head. I do have a handle on the inner bolts. Okay. okay. Last one. Now, mind you, keep your hands clean because if there's not anything in the cylinder, we don't want to in introduce anything into the cylinder. So my hands are very clean right now. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh, I love it when I'm right. <laughs> Take a look at this. Now mind you, this is not from what I just did. See that? Take a look at that diaphragm. That is brass shavings. And I have no idea where those came from. It probably came from when it snapped. But those right there are why we take the cylinder head apart and clean it out. That is a big, big no-no. And what will happen is if this brass gets here underneath this little flapper, this is a little valve. And this little valve, it needs to seat properly against the metal. If it doesn't seat properly against the metal, you won't have pressure or you won't have vacuum. So big no-no. I can see some brass on the underside. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this guy out with a sanitary wipe. Look at all that brass. Oh. If I would have turned that on, there's a good chance that that might have actually really damaged my piston. So next I have to inspect my piston down in the cylinder. That works so well. These alcohol wipes that we use in hospitals, they work so well at collecting metal dust. There we go. 
All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up that flapper valve right there, and I'm gonna clean underneath it because that is where dust likes to collect and my flapper valve just shot completely across the room. Of course it did. Okay. All right, just put that guy back in, nice and clean. Clean underneath the valve. Excellent. Okay, and that's one of the reasons I have the pick here is so that I can help guide it into the hole. Excellent. All right, cool. There we go. So this guy is good. Now I'm not just gonna place it down anywhere because it has to stay clean. Next, inside the cylinder head, gotta wipe it down, make sure we get all that nasty dust out of there, all those shavings. All right, that looks pretty good. And final inspection of the piston itself. So we gotta make sure that none of this dust, none of these shavings get down in the piston or cylinder. So I got another clean alcohol wipe. Oh, and of course there is. Of course there is. Take a look at this. I don't even think the camera's gonna pick that up. There are shavings down inside. <sighs> of course. So now I've got to clean around the piston. Oh yes, look at that. There's definitely some metal flex in there. We gotta clean that out. Okay. So on this style piston, it's got a uh, like a mushroom seal or an umbrella seal. Okay, it's got this ring of Teflon that's kind of going like this and stuff collects between the piston and between the umbrella. Okay, so we gotta just kind of move it around. So I've got this pick here because we just wanna lightly go around this groove and make sure there's no metal shavings that are down in that groove. Because I have cleaned these before and there has been metal stuck in between this piston groove. It's the hardest area to get to, but it's just standard J pick will get you in there, no problem. All right, so that's good. Okay, so it's all clean right there. Uh, nothing stuck around the piston. There's a tiny little reed right here on the top. Here, let me show you guys. So it's got this reed right here on the top and you can see that there's a natural bend upwards. So what happens is when the piston goes up into the housing, it forces the reed down. All right, so I'm just gonna lightly look underneath it, make sure there's no metal shavings underneath that reed because if there is, you will get no pressure. So as the piston is going down, the reed is open, and as it goes up, the air pressure pushes against the reed, closes it, and then it builds pressure in the cylinder. So now that I got all that taken care of, the next thing we have to do is re-lubricate the housing. So let me get some silicone based lube. Well, this stuff should work pretty good. I've got some uh, Beckman Coulter spin coat. This is normally a type of lube that we would use maybe in a centrifuge. So I am going to actually use it right here, very lightly on these seals. All right, nice and light on the seals. It also makes sure that the seal is nice and clean. Okay, make sure not to get anything on it. This guy here is looking excellent. <laughs> Did I drop it? Okay, so final inspection, this guy here is looking good. Now, I have to take a very thin coat and wipe it on the inside of the cylinder. Very thin coat. I'm gonna remove like 95% of all the grease that I put in it. thin coat and now around the umbrella seal and on the bottom of it is where I'm going to put probably a majority of the grease because I want that grease to sit lower in the cylinder. Here we go. 
If you guys didn't know, uh, this here is what they call a wobble piston because it just wobbles back and forth. And uh, there is no wrist pin, which is the wrist pin is what is on like a car piston and it allows the piston to operate independent of the connecting rod. Well, this one doesn't have a um, wrist pin. So this one here only has a piston that is basically part of the rod. So in order for it to operate, it wobbles back and forth. And that is why it's got this odd umbrella seal on the top here is because it has to wobble back and forth inside the cylinder and as it wobbles it has to maintain a seal because they're compressing gas, right? And that's why it's got this umbrella seal because the umbrella seal, even though the pistons wobble around, it maintains a really good contact on the edges. All right, there we go. It's looking good. So now I'm going to make sure that I don't <laughs> put a crease or anything in that umbrella seal. And uh, notice I put the piston on diagonally don't press it straight down, put it diagonally and use that oval to compress that umbrella seal. And there we go. There it is. The cylinder will sit down in a groove. Make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure the lip is clean and free of debris. All right. And here you can see a top seal that's going to interface with that piston. So I'm going to make sure that there's a thin layer of grease on this Buna N uh, seal. It's a silicone seal. So, yep, nice thin coat. There we go. Okay, again, make sure the seal's clean, nice thin coat. And now, uh, I've got these O-rings right here. I'm going to use the rest of the grease on these O-rings right here. And I'm going to slide that rod which is from the stage one. Slide it in. All right now I can squeeze that nut down a little bit. Okay, now I've got the cylinder head bolts. And they're gonna go in exactly how we took them out. So they're gonna get torqued down diagonally. Mind you, this is an aluminum housing, so if you go just ape on it and start really torquing it down, you're going to crack the aluminum, all right? So take it in stages. So I'll, I'll screw them down so that they're just making contact. Okay. Notice I'm not screwing them down yet. They're just barely making contact. And that's because we want to shift it around a little bit at the very end and make sure all those seals are mated up nice and neat. We're not pinching any O-rings, because if you pinch an O-ring, you're done. You're absolutely done, okay? So let's see. Okay. Okay, so there we go. You can see I can still move it around. Plate. I'm going to move around a little bit, make sure that everything is seated nice and neat. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm adding about a half a turn of torque, and now I'll go through and torque the rest of them back down. I don't know the torque spec for it. It doesn't really matter. I've just been doing this so long. I kind of know almost exactly how much it takes. Okay. Now the last thing we got to do is we got to plug it in and try it out. Let's see, where's the on switch? All right. So no squeaky squeaks. We're okay. Oh, son of a gun. You know something? Guys, we got to loosen them all back up again. Why didn't you guys remind me? Alright, I forgot the other handle. <laughs> so crazy. Okay. So let's take these back two back out. Mind you, 
I didn't just loosen them up. I loosened all of them up so that we're not just pinching down on one side of the plate. I loosened them all up so I can remove the back two. Oh well, mistakes happen, man. All right, there we go. So here's the handle that I forgot. Let's go ahead and put it in. There it goes. I knew something didn't feel right. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, so now they're all finger tight. Now we will torque them back down. So just do it until they start grabbing and then go ahead and torque them correctly. fittings are all tight. Okay, let's try it again. Sounds like it works to me. No weird squeaks. Everything's connected. I didn't hear any air leaks. And if anything, it's definitely generating pressure. And notice, we did use the torch. And we definitely took our time. Make sure if you ever have to do anything with air compressors, go ahead and take the cylinder head off. It's okay, I know it sucks, but as you've seen, there was debris inside the cylinder. So it's just one of those things. Make sure you don't do a half-ass job. Do it all. And this guy, this guy is definitely stuck. Look at this. Oh well, I'll get him off some other how. Guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a little informative. Sometimes it is nice to have a torch because it can save the day. Thanks again, guys.